And so we have arrived at the final episode of the second season of Devil New System. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I originally started the second season because I remember the first season has been very heavy on fan service and I therefore could basically relax and turn off my brain while still watching it. However, I had forgotten that it had a really good story and I really hope that there's material enough to create a season 3 because I really love this show but I don't want them to create a season 3 that is anime original because they run a risk of having a very weak story with a lot of fan service which would ruin this series so I rather want it to end than, than basically being dragged through the mud like Sora no Utashima who had two really good seasons and then there came the movie that basically ruined it but let's get into the final episode of the second season which sees Basara, Mio and Leonard going up against Chaos and they don't stand a chance they manage to wound him however we find out that his blood is like acid because the building it falls upon basically are like getting eaten away by, by his blood so they don't have any chance by basically trying to cut him into pieces. And the only way, reason they are able to defeat him is because Ramses holds him, is able to hold him down with his gravity magic. However, this takes a lot uh, or puts a lot of strain on Ramses so he can't keep it up forever. However, Basara, he concludes that the reason why Chaos is here wasn't because he was actually promised Mio, Basara and Leonard's life. It is because he's unable to leave because of the gravity of the place they are in. And it also means that if they can create a very strong gravity, they can pull him into another dimension. And what better to use than a black hole? And they, and of course, who is the best black hole user, or the only one we know that can create that? Mio. So Basra tells her that she shall create a black hole to suck chaos in, and then Basra will push him in. However, they need time for that, and therefore Leonard has to distract chaos, and he managed to distract him. And we see Basra fully powered up with all his three limiters removed. And he is able to push in chaos into the black hole that Mio creates and defeats him. However, even for this is the most important battle in a way. It isn't actually the only battle because there is at Mitra, as you remember, at the end of this of the last episode, basically being shady and attacking or planning to attack uh, what is it called? The girls, you know, uh, what you called Rukia and Yuki. However, he's even going farther because he's using some messman that basically drains life and weakening uh, weakens Yuki enough so he can defeat her. And Rukia is also getting weakened because Succubus is, is half human. So yeah, he's really nasty. And then he even goes as far as trying to kill Kurumi, who is, from his perspective, unconscious. However, he actually let his guard down because he thought that Maria, she was unconscious. And that actually costs his, his, him his right arm. Yes, the most important arm, or not arm, it's actually just the hand, the right hand, which is the most important hand. We all know that. You all know the importance of the right hand. And then when he is trying to kill Mio with uh, his scythe, he actually gets his left hand cut off by Kurumi who isn't unconscious. And then Maria, she goes really berserk and basically beats him so much that his horn is getting broken. And I'm not even sure if there's much of him left, man. He is pretty much beaten to mincemeat, man. So, yeah, he is done. 
And there's also some other people that is done, and that is the council, because they are really evil, because they actually they actually planned even if chaos was to lose to use a button that would turn everyone inside the field into dust. However, the sister of Leonard, Lelia, she isn't gonna stand for this and kills the council in just one moment. Yeah, just like that, she kills them. And she even tells the decapitated head of the council that if they hadn't tried to kill Leonard, she would have let them live out of the goodness of her heart. And she's also really skilled apparently because she can actually feel that Jin is outside the door even before he thought that he had eliminated his present completely. And she even tells us something really interesting and that is that she smells dragon, an ancient kind. So I wonder, is, is Jin a dragon? Is he a dragon or does he have dragon blood in him? Which would mean that Basra also has dragon blood in his veins. And because she implies that the reason why Basra can use banishing shift is because he has the blood of Jin in his veins and not because he has the God's blood. So yeah. And she even is going so far as he's almost ready to fight Jin. And I wonder if those two were to fight, how much destruction would they cause? And who is the strongest? In a way, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure. Because I kind of want Lelia to survive because, yeah. But then again, Jin, he is kind of cool. So, yeah. However, they are broken up by Basra arriving. And there we actually get some really important information about how Basra managed in the last episode to arrive at the battlefield. Even in his, you know, hurt, hurt uh, condition after killing Belgasaur. He actually got transported there by Lars, who also transported him there so he could stop the council from... Yeah, doing the evil thing. However, the council is already dead. So, yeah. And Lelia, yeah, she implies that she may want to take Basra, but still, Basra, he doesn't seem to be, let us say, on bad terms with Leonard, so she decides to let him go, and I'm pretty sure she also don't want to fight Basra and Jin at the same time. And now that we are talking about Lars, we actually finally get to see what's underneath his mask because he actually takes down one of the heroic spirits that uh, what's he called or multiple but actually heroic spirits um, that chaos has summoned and he does that or at least the first one because it has grabbed Claudia and a girl and he want to protect Claudia and sadly Claudia and him doesn't get together in this episode I would have loved that I would have loved that. That would have been such a great thing. Oh man, I would have been so happy. But still, it's nice to finally see what's, how his demon form looks. Because we don't know if the face that he's using when he is posing as a human is his real face or not. But now we know. And as I recall, he's actually using a different face as a human. So yeah. But Claudia, oh man. Oh, not Claudia. I mean, Leila. Oh, man. I like her. I like how she is implying that she's gonna treat the, what's called Leonard. But, oh, basically, let's, yeah. Rewarding him for all the things he has done when they get back. Oh, man. <laughs> I like Leila. I really hope we get to see more if there's getting a season three of her because I like her so much. And then. Let me think, there must be something more. Oh yeah, the plot actually, or let's say it like this, why the council was killed and why Belgasaur was killed. First of all, the reason why he was killed was because Belgasaur worked for the council and therefore he could offer the head of Belgasaur to Ramses, which would of course still have meant the issue if the council was there. But now that the council has been taken down, the demon world is actually not in a state of war, which means that less people has a reason to pursue Mio, which would mean that Mio can be, shall we say, free. 
So Rancis, he's actually really interest. He's really surprised that one person, Basra, is willing to go so far for just one sister, as he says. And I must say, I like the ending of this episode. <laughs> uh, of uh, them new sister first, where you see all the girls are coming in and oh man, are coming in and yeah, he's basically they are basically arguing over which um, of them uh, Basra belongs to, and then Basra says, "Okay, fine, I'm gonna relieve you all." So yeah, <laughs> oh man, and oh man, Kurumi, she's a closet pervert because when she comes in in some sexy underwear and she says, Maria forced me to wear it and then we see at the end in the credits that she actually watches her sister's nipples getting sucked on. Or is it actually her? I actually think it's her as a watching herself getting sucked, uh, Basra sucking on her nipples. So yeah, mid Maria. So yes, she's a classic pervert, man. Oh man. I love this series so much. I love it so much, guys. I really hope that we get a season three that is based on source material and not anime original. And with that, all I can have to say, all I have to say is have a good day, good night, wherever you are, and I'll see you later, guys. Cheers.